Ode to Abterra, the most efficient vehicle on the planet. <laughs> Hi friends and welcome to my Aptera journey. My name is Rich Rodriguez. This channel is intended to share with you the excitement of blasting down the freeway in 150 kilowatts of power in a lightweight Aptera Roadster or the joy of taking a twisting mountain road in the all-wheel drive lightweight Roadster. But we don't have a Roadster yet. But there are some things I'd like to share with you today. So let's get right to it. First, a little more about myself. I'm a trained electrical engineer and I have an MBA in finance. I've developed capitalization tables for an IPO. And I've underwritten hundreds of millions of dollars of government credit. Today, we're going to talk about Two broad areas. Number one, market financial conditions. And number two, corporate finance or corporate development. Part one, current financial market conditions. First of all, these things matter. Why? Because Aptera Motors is moving towards an IPO. Financial market conditions change and they can change quickly. And financial markets, in part, determine when a company is best to do an IPO. Currently, inflation is at record modern high uh, rates. Inflation is rather high. Um, at least over the last 10 years or so, inflation is high. So in response to that, the Fed is raising interest rates in order to tamp down inflation. On November 2nd, the Fed raised the discount window rate by 75 basis points. That's three quarters of 1%. And I suspect in December, we're going to see another rate increase and perhaps more after that. As the Fed starts to compress economic activity to bring inflation down. That also means that unemployment is going to go up. The Fed is um, already forecasting higher unemployment. Um, but as a consequence of some of these changes in market interest rates, we've also recently seen mortgage rates top 7%. They've come down recently, but mortgage rates are high versus two years ago. Um, I got two and a quarter. I nailed the bottom. I'm a finance guy. Um, but remember, financial market conditions change and they can change rapidly. I remember a couple years ago, I went to do a bond issuance and there was some news in Europe that impacted market sediment. And when our bonds priced, the next morning in New York, we received 10 basis points better than we had anticipated. So the moral of the story is markets change, they can change quickly, but in this current environment with uh, inflation and increasing interest rates, um, a likely contraction of the economy, I don't see an IPO for Aptera at least for 18, maybe 24 months, simply based on market conditions. That could change, but that's my guess. However, Aptera still has work to do. 
Uh, they recently released their Gamma vehicle, and we're going to see Delta soon. Where's the money coming from that? Where's the, the money to help with tooling? Where's the money to come from for inventory, um, design, et cetera, et cetera? Remember, as we talked about last time, Aptera has been very successful in crowdfunding. There's family office monies that are available. That could be the gates or the warehousers or um, the, um, the family that owns Walmart. I forget who the heck they are. It could be um, private equity like um, BlackRock. It could be venture capital like Sequoia. It could be pension funds. Um, it could even be another external corporation wishing to hedge their bets and purchase a chunk of um, Aptera. It could even be government money. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, takeaway. Um, market conditions are tough right now for an IPO. Um, inflation, rising rates, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be 18 to 24 months, in my opinion, before an IPO window would be uh, start to present itself. Despite that, there's a lot, an array of funding sources available to the company uh, to meet its uh, development needs. Part two. Corporate finance or corporate development. And when I use those terms, what I mean is uh, a company that's in the stage of development such as Aptera that needs new uh, capital and new uh, funding sources in order to get them up to production or into the market so that momentum from profitability and ca profit cash flow can start to build a sustainable business model. So, uh, the first thing I'd like to talk with you under uh, corporate finance or corporate development is the WeFunder share conversion. Now, some of you have purchased um, shares of Aptera Motors during the WeFunder rounds. I don't know, was that last year, year and a half ago? I know myself, I purchased um, B1B preferred shares on WeFunder. And when that contract um, was converted into shares, my conversion price on the B1B preferred shares was $0.22. Cents. The current valuation for Aptera is $10.50. And that's a 4,600% increase. $0.22, cents to $10.50. Cents. That share growth is 4,600%. That's pretty good. And I'm going to speculate that there's going to be Aptera millionaires. Yes, I believe there's going to be Aptera millionaires. The next thing I'd like to talk about is a recent non-binding $21 million investment in Aptera. On October 24th, the company entered into a non-binding term sheet with a potential investor. Now, we don't know who this potential investor is. It could be a private person, family office, private equity, venture capital, pension fund, and another corporation, as I mentioned before. Um, Daimler, who knows? We don't know who this investor is. But under the terms of the term sheet, the investor agrees to purchase 2 million shares at $10.50 a share for a total consideration of $21 million. This is fabulous news. This is fabulous news. Whoever this investor or investor group is or the investor entity is, they can see the growth opportunity and the work and the milestones that Aptera Motors is completing as they move down the path towards production and profitability. The next thing I'd like to talk with you today about under uh, corporate finance or corporate development are governmental monies. Remember, that's one of the funding sources available to Aptera at this time. On August 24th, 
the California Energy Commission identified Aptera as the recipient of a $21.9 million grant. And grant monies do not dilute shareholders. And that was from the California Energy Commission that I mentioned. Now there is a $26 million match that's necessary to take that roughly $22 million grant. But oh, by the way, didn't we just talk about an investor signing up uh, to invest in Aptera? That new investment of $21 million almost completely satisfies the $26 million needed to secure this grant. That's fabulous. Well done, Aptera, in putting those things together. Good job. Now, in my line of work as a public finance officer, we can sometimes stack awards to secure more money. For instance, uh, my state might provide $20 million for a wastewater treatment plant, and maybe the uh, USDA provides another $5 million. So you can kind of stack these things. Now, I don't know the terms of the uh, California Energy Commission grant monies, but that's something that's possible. I don't know. I've not read the uh, potential uh, grant contract. Um, but Aptera Motors, if you're listening, I would recommend that you get a grants coordinator or a grants manager. Managing grants takes time, it takes forms, and it takes some accounting knowledge. So you would be well advised to get an accounting, or I'm sorry, a grants coordinator or a grants manager. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about under corporate development or corporate um, finance is the Department of Energy loan program. There had been some discussion that Aptera Motors was going to apply for funding from the U.S. Department of Energy's uh, loan program office. So, uh, being a finance guy, when I was in San Diego on the 8th of September, attending the Ambassador Reception and Facility Tour and the reveal of Gamma, I wanted to have some one-on-one -on -one time with then CFO Janice Sun Burlingame. So I approached Janice in, uh, off the side of the factory floor and I told Janice that I realized the loan program office had been reinvigorated under the leadership of its director, Jigger Shaw. Jigger Shaw is the former founder and CEO of Sun Edison. And Jigger knows that we not only need to rapidly decarbonize, but he also knows that the energy transition is the biggest entrepreneurial opportunity in the last hundred years. Transportation, aviation, energy generation, energy distribution, energy storage. It's the biggest opportunity for entrepreneurs in a hundred years. So I mentioned to Janice that the loan program office was in, reinvigorated under Jigger Shaw's leadership. And Janice told me that Aptera Motors at that time had an application that was ready to submit to the Department of Energy in about two weeks' time. And that was the 8th of September. I also mentioned to Janice that the Loan Program Office encourages pre-application interviews to guide applicants through the process to kind of uh, mold their application to meet program requirements so they can be successful. But Janice told me that Aptera had already engaged a consultant to do the bulk of that work. And hearing that news, that DOE program 
loan program office application was in the works really excited me. Because uh, remember, Ford Motor and Tesla were prior awardees uh, in the uh, 2009 and 11 time frame. Uh, so that's good news as well. Um, but I'd like to share with you a quote from Jigger Shaw, who was the guest on a Bloomberg podcast called Odd Lots from the October 17th program. I listen to a lot of Bloomberg. I read a lot of financial news. And uh, I, I just happened to be listening to this Odd Lots program, and, and Jigger Shaw was going to be the featured guest. So um, one of the things that Jigger told us, and I'll share with you a, a clip from that program in a moment, was that the loan program office under Title 17 was authorized to lend $69 billion, but $35 billion was already out the door, mostly in 2009 and 2011. And as I mentioned, some of that went to Ford, some of that went to Tesla, and Jigger said about $39 billion was available left to lend. And this includes the Advanced Technology Manufacturing Program, which is what Aptera would be applying to. But there was more good news to be learned from this podcast. With the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, there's an additional $300 billion of lending authority to the Loan Program Office. And in my opinion, the bulk of this will most likely be distributed in the next two years. That's $150 billion. So I'd like to play a clip for you right now of Jigger Shaw, the director of the Loan Program Office at DOE. And let's listen carefully to what he has to say. If you fill out the paperwork and you qualify for the Loan Programs Office, then we'll give you money. Mm -hmm. like full stop, right? So I don't really care if you're going to be the next Elon Musk or you're going to be sure. the next whatever. Right. If your project meets what we call the reasonable prospect of repayment, we really do operate like a commercial bank. So if I feel like the right. ingredients of your project means that we're likely to get paid back, then you'll get a loan. Okay. What we just heard Jigger Shea say was this. If you fill out the forms properly, and if you meet the requirements of the loan program office, and if you can repay the loan, there's a prospect or a likelihood that you can repay the loan, you're going to get the money. Full stop. And I think that's uh, his exact words. Full stop. You're going to get your money. Um, so again, that's good news. Very good news. So that's really what I want to share with you today. In closing, Aptera Motors, with $70 million already raised, and with a new large potential investment commitment online, and with some $21 million from the California Energy Commission already lined up, and with DOA money from the Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Program in the pipeline, I believe that Aptera Motors is well situated from a financial perspective for the near term. Certainly, there'll be additional fundraising needs. Maybe it's inventory, um, uh, additional staff to actually man the manufacturing line. There's always going to be additional funding needs. As the company starts to build vehicles, starts to throw off cash, and builds a sustainable business producing outstanding revolutionary vehicles. So, um, Aptera seems well poised for the near term financially. Until we speak next time again, I wish you a happy holiday. Stay safe, be well, and charge on. No more drilling, can you see? We're done. Take me.
Taking off from the sun No more 